We were within 10 seconds. That flag can drop any time within 10 seconds. Flags there down. We go. They're off. Terry Rinker again got a good start on the outside, and this time it looks like we got Greg Foster right inside of him on the inside of the yellow boat. They've gone by the score up buoy. Now they can change lanes. Now they can start pushing each other around. Is that right, Bill? Yes, they can. And, and Len Simberger got a good start, and he's on the inside lane. And that's unusual. He's not an old pro, Len Simberger, correct? Well, no, Lenny's an old pro as far as driving. You know, he is building his own boats now, so he's got a le learning curve there to do. Now you see Greg Foster. Greg Foster is known That's universally. Len right there is Greg Foster though. Yep. And yep. Greg Greg is known universally as one tough cookie. A very aggressive driver. Hard left turn. Hard right turn. There it is. And now he has a very short shoot. And right behind him is Len Semberger, and behind him in the other yellow boat is Terry Rinker. So I think we're going to have a good fight for second. Len Semberger in second right now, but he's getting pressured by another yellow boat uh, for third. And uh, there we have Greg Foster, Mr. Aggressive. Tell me about Greg. He's been out of a boat for two years. Madman across the water. That's his nickname, and he is a madman across the water. He only knows two speeds, on and off. Are you telling me that he crashes every so often? Uh, the first 10 years I met Greg, I don't think he finished a race. And all of a sudden, he's, he did start backing off a little to oh, finish. Oh, wait a minute. Did you see Lem Semberger? Lynn Semberger went right off the course there. Uh, no, I did not your, see that. Yeah, you know, he must have had damage to that boat because he was right there behind your leader, who you're looking at now, Greg Foster, and he just went to the right. So I, there you go. I thought he had some damage. I saw something yellow fly up, oh, and there yeah. it is. Left spot. So what causes that, Billy? Uh, water pressure. It might have had a little chip or a little hole, just a, a screw hole even, a, a screw backing out can blow that thing just apart like that. So Terry Rinker in that uh, yellow boat now has taken the fight to Greg, uh, Greg Foster. Now he's taking the fight to him. He's actually gone in front of him. He's gotten the outside. Is that a huge disadvantage like unlimited racing? Well, like we talked about before, these guys are kind of dancing with these partners now. They're really not showing all their wares. They, they're kind of holding back for that final because the final is where the payday is at, and they don't want to end up like Len Semberger with a big hole in their boat over a prelim heat. And you said Len Semberger actually builds his own boat, so he's got nobody to fault for that uh, failure but himself, correct? Well, that's true, and that's, that's not a good feeling. I've been there and done that. All right, there's Terry Rinker around the right-hand chicane going into a hard left turn, and he's got uh, Greg Foster right inside there. Back to that right hard turn. Now what's interesting is you might have the inside on the left turn, but then when you get to that right turn, now you're on the outside. Yeah, that's true. So, you, you know, it's really hard when you're uh, overtaking these guys. you got to kind of hide in that blind spot on those mirrors on their hip and try to sneak around them. And look at what's happening behind uh, Terry Rinker. That's Tim Siebold, Billy's son, who is now fighting for second with Terry Rinker. Terry Rinker, uh, and then there's a fourth place boat just in Tim's rooster tail there. Can't tell who that is. Tim uh, Siebold is in the Fox Fleming boat. Terry Rinker's in the yellow boat. And inside there you have Greg Foster, madman across the water, but right now the madman looks like Tim Siebold. Yeah, Tim's got a push on. He, he needs to try to make up for that first heat. You know, he, he did not have, he had a DNF in that first heat. Now, why are these heats important? Why, why does it matter to do well in these preliminary heats? Well, it's all, oh, as Chris Fairchild's moved up into fourth place. Wow, we haven't uh, seen him yet. The, the points go towards uh, your point total. You discard one heat, your worst heat on Saturday and your worst heat on Sunday, and then the point leaders will be on pole for the start of the final 15 lapper. Greg Foster starting to put pressure on Tim Siebold. He's got the shorter distance on the inside. Good acceleration. You know, in unlimited racing, you have to give a guy five or seven bow lengths before you come over on him. Tell me about Formula One. Can you have to give the guy five bow lengths? Formula One is cockpit to cockpit is the overlap. In other words, if you can, because their peripheral vision is way down in the safety cell, if you can look out to the side and see a guy's boat, you have to leave him alone. All right, we've got uh, Greg Foster on the inside, on the right side of your screen. There's uh, Terry Rinker, who is uh, kind of holding Tim Siebold in tight, but now Tim's got to go on the, you know, he's got the inside there. Look, those boats just pop out of the corner because as they come out of the corner, once again, they're on the up button. That engine is coming up and tilting out, getting that bow out of the water, 
getting less drag to get that boat to accelerate. As they go down the straightaway, like where they are now, they slowly put the boat back down so they don't blow over. Here you see the bow go down around the corner and boom, pop it right back up again. Right back up. They're, they're doing something with both feet and both hands every second the boat is moving. That's a beautiful shot. Look how little of that boat is in the water. And as we said, the less boat in the water, the faster you go. But that's got diminishing returns, does it not, Bill? Yes, it does. I mean, you know, there are racing engines and racing boats, and they're fragile, and they can break any time. So you want to always try to protect your equipment and finish the race, because in order to win, you have to finish. Tim Siebold on the outside on this corner because it's a right hand. Oh, right. whoa, whoa, that, that was, was tight. So uh, that looked more like final heat racing to me. Uh, he was giving him no room at all there. Yeah, that was tight. That was very close. They almost hit. You can see the Terry Rinker's boat, the yellow boat on the outside. So really, you can see how much smaller it is. That's a smaller boat. And I assume it's a smaller boat. That means it's maybe not quite as stable. It does run rough water, water, water very, very well. David Lee started building that boat and called it the Arrow Slot. The Arrow Slot, he wanted to build a tunnel boat because he'd gone over backwards a few times and he wanted to build a tunnel boat that would not blow over, which I think is impossible, but he gave it a good shot and he came up with a very fast boat. There you see the checkered flag for Heat 3 of Formula 1. Uh, Terry Rinker, the winner. Terry's been around forever. He's a tough guy, too. Uh, he's been around since I've been around, and uh, he's a really uh, hard-knuckle, bare-knuckle boat racer. So there you see him return. Well, what do they have to do these boats? Not much between races. These engines are pretty stable, and, you know, they don't have to do a lot of work unless something breaks. No, they're pretty stable, just like we talked before. It's basically the same engine they run in Rouen for 24 hours. They just don't turn it quite as many RPMs. Right, not a lot of changes between heat. So hopefully we're going to get to talk to the winner with uh, Chris down in the pits. And let's hear what uh, Terry Rinker has to say about finishing first in heat one. Chris Francis here with Terry Rinker. Terry, that was, uh, we said it before, that was some racing there. I tell you what, man, that's some best racing we've had this weekend so far. Uh, you know, Timmy is fast, Fairchild's fast, Greg Foster's up there. I mean, tell you what, with the course the way it's set up here, some drivers have, you know, good and bad points of the course. That's why you're seeing some blading changing and a lot of fun racing out there for us. And you're leading the points here, too. Yeah, it's great to have the Amsoil team up front again. Uh, we're just going to try and hold on to it for uh, the rest of the day and finish it up tomorrow. All right, Terry, thanks so much. Thank you. There you have it. Results from Heat 3. Terry Rinker in the Amsoil Synthetics. And in the Seaway Marine Engine was Greg Foster. That's it. Heat 3 for Formula 1. Heat 3 of F1 Racing has been brought to you by the Hyundai Sonata. Moving right along into Heat 3. And also on behalf of Graham Trucking, I'd like to present the Heat 3 winner in the F1 Prop Tunnel Boats. Come on out here. T Terry, you won the Heat 3-2. Congratulations. How was the, the last race there? I'll tell you what, it got a little rough out there, and we had some dice, and there was some good good racing going on. And, uh, you know, we just love being out here at Seafair. Glad to be a part of the show and uh, keep that Amsoil boat up front. All right. Congratulations, sir. Those are the first three awards here in the first three heats at Seafair. Thanks so much.